While you're in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like and subscribe. All right, shalom, most high in Christ blessed. I'm Officer Asa. To my right, I have Officer Judah. To my left, Officer Hosea. Far left, Officer Ariel. All right, most high in Christ blessed. Today's class is entitled Evading Adulterous Holes. Adultery Part One. The Married Man. So you could tell already by the title. I'm going to say it again. Evading Adulterous Holes. Adultery Part 1. The Married Man. So this class is going to be about how to avoid the adulterous holes because they are out there. So you're going to see some things today that you might not even know is outside these doors. Because a lot of times we be in La La Land. So... Let's first start off with video one, because this is the mindset that we must be in. We got to understand when we walk outside the doors what we walking into. Play that video. Twenty years ago, I had this nice, simple life. And now it's a nightmare. Okay, now you probably wondering, why did you play, why y'all play a Terminator trailer and the title is Evading Adulterous Holes? Because you got to understand, let's paint the picture. In the Terminator movie, the Terminator is a machine that was bred and dispatched to kill important people. Some of those people is revolutionaries. Some of those people have the potential to do great things. So the Terminator's job is to find that person and eliminate that person. So how do that correlate? You got to understand, married man, because that's what we're dealing with today. Those adulterous hoes are that Terminator. Sometimes they can be relentless, like that Terminator machine, all to come after you and do what? Ultimately destroy you. That's why I want to start off with that. We don't think like that. Let's go to the next clip. So we're seeing that. We're going to video two, whole video two, whole video two. Don't play it yet. All praise y'all on point today, IT. What is that showing? What am I saying? What is this class about? Mary, man, you are being hunted. And you may not think so, but as you see these videos, you see what's out there waiting on you, it's going to give you a different perspective out there. This is a message to you. Let's play it. And you just do it. You got to think about your life. Being a black man in America isn't easy. The hunt is on. And you're the prey. Stop it. Stop it. I don't think we, we think like that when we out here and we walking around. It's just like in the Matrix. Neo was walking. He getting distracted. Oh, man, the woman in the red dress. Then he turned his head around, and it's a gun in his face. Play. Keep playing. All I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, survive. All right? 
Mr. Butler had me thinking, because he was the only one who ever came at me like he gave a damn. And grandpa's always kicked that religion. So this is a clip from Menace to Society. Everybody familiar with this movie? This movie had a lot of heavy messages in here. Not veering away from the topic. You got to understand, you being hunted, you still, you still probably don't believe it. Brother still don't probably believe it. You are being hunted. Then they just put a picture up of a sister talking about some, I got to find me an Israelite man. She was half naked in the car. Right, Sukiana. Talking about she got to find her an Israelite man. These adulterous hoes is out there waiting. That's why I wanted to play that clip. We went to the Terminator clip first. Then we went to the Minister Society uh, clip. The man in the, the clip, that's Mr. Butler. Mr. Butler trying to speak some sense into Cain. Cain's grandfather trying to speak some sense into Cain. The one you saw sitting next to Cain, his friend Sharif. Sharif trying to speak sense into Cain. Why? Because they see the path that Cain is going down is death and destruction. They see what could happen to Cain if he don't be aware outside. Guess what? Mr. Butler, Grandpa Sharif, that's leadership. Leadership be making all these classes. That's the Lord talking to you. The Lord using them to speak to you. Same thing with this class. But a lot of times we let it go in one ear and out the other. That's a warning. Moving along, moving along. So, merry man, you are being hunted. Adulterous hoes are on the hunt. Let me get Proverbs 6 and 26. It's the book of Proverbs, chapter 6 and verse 26. For by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. Read it again from the top. For by means of a whorish woman. So, the scripture is telling us what? For by means, the actions of a whorish woman, read, a man is brought to a piece of bread. All of you prophets that's in this truth, you building, you trying to change yourself, you doing all these great things in your life to try to better yourself and be an example to your people. These whores that's waiting outside, their job is to destroy you. That's what you got to understand. And we're going to show you proof this is going on. I was shocked at the information I was finding as I was putting this stuff together. This is a real thing. Read on. And the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. It says, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. You men in this truth, you married men are the precious life. You are the precious soul. So if a woman that's outside of your wife giving you attention, don't get big head and think you the man, imbecile. That woman trying to destroy you. Go back to the Terminator clip. I ain't saying go back to it now. I'm saying go back to in your mind. Look at that Terminator clip again. It, it ain't a Terminator that you see, though. You see hair done, lipstick, she look good, and all this. No. Think about the Terminator coming after you nonstop trying to kill you because that is their job. From there, give me 1 Peter 5 and 8. So we got to be aware when we out here. I remember in uh, the class, Sin, How, Why, What by Bishop Kanai. He said this whole world, everything in this world is set up to bring us down. It's set up to destroy us. That's why everything on TV is sexual, is lewd. It's all this stuff out here to keep us in sin, keep us breaking God's laws so what? That we ultimately end up destroyed. And you got to see that. 1 Peter 5 and 8. This is the book of 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a worn lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. That's what's going on outside these doors. Those demons are walking around seeing who they may devour, who they may destroy. So God said, be sober. And be what? Read it again. Be sober. Be vigilant. When you vigilant, you're aware of your surroundings. You're watching what's going on around you. Read. 
Because your adversary, the devil, uh -huh. as a warring lion, walketh about seeking who he may devour. Just like when you watch the animal kingdom, animal planet, that one gazelle that stray away end up getting killed every time. So if you separating yourself, you ain't studying, you ain't praying, you ain't fasting, you not putting them mental barricades around your mind so when them demons come, you gonna get devoured. From there, give me Ephesians 5, 15. Let these scriptures sink in your mind. We have to be aware of what's out here. And we finna show you what's out here. It ain't just, oh, yeah, you married. They might come at you. No, they will. Just Don't the think when we do all these blitzes and they see you and they cheering, all of them ain't got good intentions. Understand that. Read. This is the book of Ephesians. Chapter 5 and verse uh, 16. 15. 15. Seeing then that ye walk circumspectly, mm -hmm. not as fools, but as wise. It says, see that ye then walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. We have to be wise in this world that we in. Christ already said, wickedness is going to abound. And as you're going to see in this class, you're going to see how evil the world is getting. And as a married man, remember, we're dealing with the married man today. You got to walk circumspectly. You got to be on point because this is what's waiting on you outside, what we're about to get into. Read on. Verse 16, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Because what? The days are evil. The days that we are living in are evil, and you're going to see how evil they are. From now, give me Ephesians 6 and verse 11. It's the book of Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to, to stand against the wiles of the devil. You know what that's saying? We always read that and we don't understand how heavy this is what Paul is saying. You know what Paul telling us? Study the whole Bible. Because that's the armor. He ain't saying put on literal armor. He's saying study the whole Bible. Why? Read. Verse 12, for we wrestle not against... No, go back, go back. Verse, verse Put on 11. the whole armor of God that what? Put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The wiles of the devil are the tricks, the traps of the devil. We got to be ready for those things. We all going to get tried in some way, shape, or form. And the only way you're going to come out on top is if you got them scriptures in your mind. That's how we're going to war. We got to war with the word of God against all this evil that's out here. Read on. Verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, uh -huh. against the rulers of the darkness of this world, uh -huh. against spiritual in high places. Against what? Spiritual wickedness in high places. That's what we're warring against. Why do you think it's, it's so hard to keep the commandments? I'm talking about not necessarily applying them. I'm talking about you trying to live righteously, but it seems like you get tugged by all these different things because it's wickedness all around us. So if you're not preparing yourself, that stuff is going to grab hold of you. The only thing that's going to keep those things from entering into you is the word of God. You cannot separate from the word of God. That's your protection, brothers. I'm mainly dealing with the brothers. Lord, we are going to deal with the sisters next time. But brothers, we got to meditate in God's word. That's our weapon of war. You ain't meditating. You ain't praying. You ain't fasting. You ain't studying. You ain't got no defense. Read on. Verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. Paul saying it again. The whole Bible. The whole Bible. That don't mean you neglect certain things if you don't deal with that. No, go over it anyway. You might not deal with that. Go over it anyway. Because all this stuff is being put out here. You see what's going on on the news. Read. That ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. Uh-huh. And having done all to stand. We all going to get tried. But if we ain't preparing ourselves spiritually, that stuff is going to take us out. Now. Let's see the evil that's out here. Remember, said earlier, Mary man, you're being hunted. 
We're going to an article now. Let's read the title of that article, please. Women who date married men. 11 hush hush reasons they do it. So the wives probably got fire coming out their ears right now hearing this. This is real. This is real. This is what's waiting outside for the married men. Meaning what? It ain't just one woman. It's multiple women who prefer to deal with a man that is married. This is real. Let's go through it. Do you well, read over. that quote first? Then we just going to hit them 11 points real quick. Read that quote. Do you want to know why I never wear my ready ring when I'm out? Huh? Read. It's, be it's because I don't want desperate women hitting on me. You would think it's backwards. And who is this from? A faithful husband. Come on, man. You would think it's backwards. You would think we know we don't wear rings because that's not our culture. But you would think the man is married. You would think they would leave him alone. No, it's the opposite. The man said he take the ring off so ain't no attention on him. Let's read the points. Uh, the days are evil. Remember what the scripture said. Let's go down to the points. Point one. Point one, point one. Keep scrolling down. Scroll down. Scroll down. There we go. Number one. Read that. Number one. Married men are pre-selected by another woman. I don't think they heard you, officer. Let's read that one more time. Married men are pre-selected by another woman. That means, because we ain't going to read each paragraph under all these points, because I, I went through it. I, I read it. That means they handpicked the man that they about to go after already. That means they already know the man taken. They already know he off the market, but he's been pre-selected by them. Go down to point two. Point number two, mate choice copying. Mate choice copying. Now, this one is a little, little deep here. Let's read that first line right there. It says, if you marry a decent man. Read right. that. If you marry a decent man, other women want to copy your choice in husband. Whoa. So their second reason is they want to copy the, the married woman's choice in the husband that she picked. Read. And that is especially true if you're super hot yourself. Okay. That next line. Scroll. Okay, right there. If the woman is super gorgeous, other women want to know more about the mystery of why she chose the husband that she chose. Okay, read. Because hot women have more options, so the husband they choose must be extra valuable. Wow. So this is in their mind. This is in the adulterous whore's mind. What's so special about the husband that she got? I want to know. Next point. This is what they do. Number three. Number three. It's an easy option for lazy women. It's an easy option for lazy women, meaning they don't want to do the work to find a mate. They want to take somebody's mate. This is their mindset. Let's read that second line on that, and then we're going to just keep reading the points after that. Read. But sometimes women do mate date, excuse me, but sometimes women do date married men because they're too lazy to bother looking for a worthy single man. Stop. This is one of their reasonings for doing this. And this is what's waiting on brothers outside these doors. Let's go to the next point. Number four, he came on strong and seduced her. Let's read mm, that first line. However true it may be that some ladies try to avoid married men. Sometimes a married man in their proximity in their workplace, in their friendship group, etc., pursues them relentlessly. So sometimes, some married men be on BS. Sometimes. But these are 11 hush-hush reasons why the women do what they do. Now let's keep going. Number five, she doesn't want to be tied down. Meaning what? She want to be able to have her thrill with no responsibility and wash her hands. That's in the Bible. It says she, she, she wipe her, her mouth like she ain't do it. 
like she ain't did nothing. That's what some of them want. Next point. Number six. This one right here, this one right here, rock your, your mind. Read that, that six. Number six, read that. Number six, ego boosting through intrasexual competition. Meaning what? It makes some of them feel good. I could take your man. They, they have a hundred songs like that. But it's some of them who really think this way. It boosts their self-esteem to know that they didn't took a father, a husband from another woman. It boosts their self-esteem. This is a real thing. Next point. Number seven, the drama of dating a married man fills them up. They get a rise out of it. Remember what the scripture just said. The days are evil. They get a rise out of this stuff. Some of these women is low down and evil. They get a rise out of this. It fills them up. It boosts their ego. It gives them joy. Number eight. Number eight. They don't feel worthy of full access to a man's resources. It said they don't feel worthy of full access to a man's resources. Meaning what? They don't have, in here talk about commitment, his time. They don't have that. But they want to try to experience it somewhat with somebody else's husband. Move along. Ver uh, nine. I'm going to say verse nine. Uh, number nine. Uh -huh. The married man tricked her and used her. Again, that's sometimes. But as you're going to see, there is a whole group of women that roll like this. Because they saying sometimes it's the married man. Sometimes. Ten. Number ten. She's not actually capable of true intimacy. What? She for the street. She a hoe. She a hoe. This is what she do. So if she end up in this situation, she going to get what she can out of it, and then she going to bounce. She don't, she don't know how to be intimate. So she want to try to be with this man. She see how this man is intimate with his family and his wife, and she want to try to try to kindle that or try to create that experience, but she's not capable of it because she's a round-away girl. Eleven. Number eleven, money and generosity. Money and generosity. So she, when you read deeper into this point, because it's a lot they wrote under each point, she thinks or she wants the way that that married man spends money on his wife, the way he's generous, the way he treats her, she wants to feel like she a wife, as crazy as that is. But she a side piece, she a side hoe, she a adulterous hoe, but she wanna, she wanna feel that way. It was a clip a woman said, I can't remember where it's at, but she said she wanna do the wedding ceremony, but she don't wanna get married. This was on the internet. I can't remember where it was. So she want to feel like a wife, but she don't really want to be no wife. Next article. Because we think, you know, it's funny games out here. These things is really out here. Because right now you seeing articles, we touching on a few things, but we gonna get some real live faces talking, some real live women talking. So you understand this is real. Here we go, another one. Why women want to marry men. Why women want married men, excuse me. Why women want married men. You ready? Yep. In one study, 90% of single women were interested in a man who they thought was taken. Versus wait, wait. It said 90% of single women was interested in a man who they thought was taken. Why you can't be interested in somebody who's free, available, so you can deal with them? Next point. Versus only 59% when they thought he was single. So it's some women out here, they don't get a man attention when they know he's available. If they know he belongs to somebody, he get more attention. That's why in the quote it said the married man take his ring off so they don't try to holler at him. This is what's outside. Third point. Third point. Mate approachers may try to display qualities a person current partner lacks 
well, first offer sex with no strings as way as a way to attract merry women, merry men. Did you hear that? It said some of the adulterous hoes will approach the merry men and say, "Well, your wife don't do this, but I do it. She's not fun like me, but I am." This is how they approach you, brothers. Temptation, temptation. That's how they will approach you. That's how they will present themselves. Third point. Are oh, you read that third point? Yeah, I read the third one. All right, let's drop that. Let's drop that. Let's move to video three. Video three. Let's move to video number three. Because we read articles on this. Now we about to get into some videos, some real live people. Because a lot of us don't know this is a real thing. Hold on for you play it. Let's make sure it's cute. Let's make sure this is queued up. So now we finna get a real woman. A real live woman. Play. Y'all not gonna believe me, but your best relationship is gonna be with a married man. Pause it. And not your Pause it. Man. Pause it. Did you hear what came out of her mouth? This is real. Take it back. Take it back just a little bit. Not your husband, but somebody else's husband. It's the relationship that never ends because it never started. And what do I mean, you ask? You never break up because you was never going together. Nothing is off limits because it's already forbidden. We know the best things in the world are things we cannot have. Getting hold of a married man is like a secret treasure. And lastly, there are no rules. This is why dating a married man has been my favorite thing I done did. I love this man, y'all. This is a real live thing, brothers and sisters. We mainly talking to the brothers, but this is a real thing. This is real out here. It's women that operate like this out here. And she put that on TikTok. That's for the world to see. She letting you know, this how I get out. And she giving game to the rest of the hoes on how to be an adulterous hoe. Oh, it's like having a forbidden treasure. You want something that you can't have. That's how they are. Give me Proverbs. Chapter 7 and verse 1. The book of Proverbs, chapter 7 and verse 1. My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. So as we going through Proverbs chapter 7, we're going to stop at verse 5. You're going to understand verse 5 is the point. You're going to understand why is the Lord saying to keep my words with you. Brothers, listen to the Most High. He's giving us instruction. Read. Verse 2, keep my commandments and live as my law as the apple of thy eye. Meaning what? My commandments supposed to be the only thing you think about. That's supposed to be on the forefront of your mind. Not none of this foolishness out here. But why should the commandments be on the forefront of your mind? Why he say keep my words? Keep my, my laws as the apple of your eye. Read on. Bind them up upon thy fingers. Keep Write them. them. Keep them close to you. Read. Write them upon the table of thine heart. Keep my commandments on your mind. Why? Read. Stay unto wisdom. Thou art my sister, and call understanding thy kinswoman. It said, keep, say unto wisdom, thou art my sister, and call understanding thy kinswoman. If somebody, your brother or sister, you close to him, that's how you supposed to be with the word of God. Why is he saying all of that? What is the purpose of doing all that? Verse 5. That they may keep thee from the strange woman. Uh-huh. From the stranger which flattereth with her words. That's what we just saw on the video. So God just gave you instruction on what to do to avoid her. And it's a bunch of hers. It's a bunch of these adulterous hoes outside. That's just one video. We might not be able to get through them all. I'm talking about real live women sitting up here like, yeah, if you want to... Woo wop the bam. This is how you do this. This is how you deal if you want to be in this type of situation. Hold channels up. Giving instruction on how to be an adulterous hoe. And the only way you're going to avoid that, prophets, 
You must apply what the scripture is saying so you can avoid that, what you've seen on that video. Read verse 5 one more time. That they may keep thee from the strange woman, from the stranger which flattereth with her words. So, it's two types, right? You got two type of whores, adulterous whores that'll come after you. You got that, that aggressive one. Go to Genesis 39 and 7. You got that aggressive one. It's the book of Genesis, chapter 39 and verse 7. Uh -huh. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon, upon Joseph. So and, wait, this the aggressive one. Why is she aggressive? Let's see why. Read. And she said, lie with me. That's aggressive. That means them the ones that say, hey, you know what it is. You know what I'm trying to do. Right. Letting you know in the door what they own. Hey, ain't nobody got to know. We can keep it hush-hush. That's what the article just said. The second article said they present to that married man like, look, we could do some sex, no strings attached. I right, get out the way. You ain't got to see me no more. Friends with benefits. This is what's out here. This is the aggressive one, though. She letting you know in the door what's up, what you want to do. Verse 9. Verse 9. What Joseph say? There is none greater in this house than I. Neither have he kept back anything from me but thee. Uh-huh. Because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? That got to be your mindset, brothers. That's a great wickedness. Don't give in to that demon. That's a great wickedness you will commit. She not worth it. Remember the Terminator clip. She sent to kill you. But you getting beguiled by the eyes and how she look. No, she sent to kill you. Destroy your marriage. Ruin your name. Cost you your life and possibly cost you to lose out on the kingdom. Second death. Hell fire. You finna give, you finna, you finna experience all that for some pleasure. What you think is pleasure. It's not pleasure. It's a trap. She's on the hunt, but a foolish man to get all big-headed or feel like he the man because he getting some attention. You got a wife. That's all the attention you need. You don't need no outside attention. Next, you got the subtle hole. Give me Ecclesiastes 26 and verse 9. So you got the aggressive one come at you. She telling you, hey, hey, you know what I'm on. You know what I want to do. What you want to do? She laying you know in the door. Then you got the subtle one. How the subtle one coming? You said call and read it? Yes, sir. Ecclesiastes, Sirach. Sirach 26 and 9. Okay. The book of Sirach, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 26 and verse 9. Read. The whoredom of a woman may be known in her hearty looks and eyelids. So she might get a little looks, smile at you, crack some little jokes, appear to be friendly. But whole time, she lining you up, and you can't even see. She ain't as aggressive as the other one. The other one, she, she kick you in the door. What's up? What you want to do? The other one, she, she tries to be laid back, subtle, ask little questions here. How's the wife? Or how is Mary life? Might ask you something like that. See your answer. See your response. And you be a fool to list any of your problems. You be a fool. Because then when they hear the problems, they like, well, shit, I could swoop in now. You got what going on? Oh, I wouldn't do that. You should be treated this way. This is what we got to be aware of. This is what we got to be prepared for. Because they out there and they don't care. You see, they don't care. I'm going to show you more that they don't care. Give me the next video. This is a real thing. A lot of us didn't know this existed. Stop. Read the title. Read the title. This is real. Tips, Tips of dating a married man I and how to date a married man. Dating advice for women, et cetera, et cetera. I can't. This woman got a whole channel. 
And this ain't her only video. Bro, I'm telling you, when you really be sitting up here and you be looking into all this stuff, bro, you be shocked. Ezra said evil going to increase. Christ said evil is going to increase. This is evil increasing. We don't value marriage no more as a people. You got a woman sitting up here giving tips on how to deal with a married man. No shame. Got a thousand K followers. And like I said, this ain't her only video. Bro, I'm sitting up here finding all of this stuff. And I'm like, you, you can't be serious. Play and stop at that timestamp because we ain't finna play this whole video. But she giving tip after you tip after what? tip. Play it. I'm only staying in the marriage for the kids. How many of you have heard that? Stop right there. Stop, 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 stop. We gonna let it play. Brothers, you be a fool if you up here talking about what's going on in your house in front of these hoes. Fair speech. That's what the scripture call it. Fair speech. Oh, that's what's going on? What problems you got? Your wife did what? She made you mad? And they and a lot of them be at the job. A lot of them be at the job. Yeah, work wife. That's the other one. Work wife. Work whore. Play. This her little intro. Hello, my name is Kina. I am the O Experience. Welcome back to my channel, which is geared towards everything relationships, dating, and loving yourself in between. This video is the rules to dating a married man. Before we get into the information, I do want you to like this video. I do want you to smash your subscribe button. And of course, I do want you to comment down below. You've stumbled upon this video for a couple of different reasons. You're either dating a married man and you just want, really want to know the tea. Or you on here, you're being nosy, you've entertained, maybe dating a married man, or you're married and you want to hear the advice that I'm giving. Probably the woman that your man may be cheating with. Listen, I'm not here to judge anybody. I'm not here to condone anything. I am just here to give rules of the game. Regardless if I do this video or not, cheating remains the same. It's not my fault that women entertain married men, nor am I condoning it, like I said. So, enough of that. Let's get into this information. Y'all okay, ready? pause. Right. Let's go to that next time stamp for this video. It's only one other time stamp. Let's get to it. And, and look, if you was to drag this video, you will see every damn tip and point. You hear her, she talking about rules to the game. But then she says she ain't condoning it. She condoning it. You got a channel. It's called Tips. When you watch, if you training to fight, they go on, you go on YouTube, they got tips on, on punches to throw in boxing. That's a whole instruction manual for boxing. You giving tips on adultery. But you don't condone it. We at that second time stamp, play it if we there. Throughout the relationship, prepare for it to be a bumpy ride. Moving on to number two, have an end game. What I mean by having an end game is you need to know the purpose for this relationship. Stop. Anywhere. Meaning what? What you trying to get out of it? Brothers, they hunting. They hunting. Yeah, she willing to spread eagle, throw her legs open, but she got a purpose behind what she doing. She trying to get something out the situation. You hearing from one of them right here. Play. Relationship, right? But especially when dating a married man, you need to know what your end game is. How long this relationship is going to last, what you're going to actually get out of the relationship, and you need to have an exit strategy. That is most important, right? This guy is not gonna end up with you. Even though I know you've known somebody whose relationship, it happened this way, he was married at first, they were dating, now all of a sudden they were together, they're living in marital bliss, and everything is happy. Mm -hmm. That is very few and far between. Remember, this is 
reality. This is your situation. And nine times out of ten, he's not going to choose you in the end. Stop. That's that. That's at the time stamp 341. Did y'all hear this, man? She up here schooling women on how to be home wreckers. She say, before you get in it, make sure you can get some out of it. This is what's outside. No shame at all. She got a whole channel. Say she don't condone it, but still giving tips. Make sure you get some out the situation that adulterous holes, hence the name of the class. Moving along, because again, this is a real thing. Give me Proverbs 6 and verse 32. What is their motive? What are these women's motive? Let's hear it again. The Bible, the Lord telling you what the motive of these women is. Read. The book of Proverbs, chapter 6 and verse 32. But whoso committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding. So, brothers, understand. It don't matter what you perceive to be, you know scriptures and all of this. You commit that act, it show you don't got to understand it, bro. You don't have no understanding when you commit that act, bro. But let's not miss the point. What is their motive? What is these women's motive when they get you hooked, when they get their hands on you? Read. He that doeth it destroyeth his own soul. So when you do that, bro, you're destroying your own soul. She is trying to destroy you. You're destroying yourself. You just heard from articles and videos, they do not have your, your best interests at heart. Their interest, their whole motive is, is self. And if they got to destroy your whole life in the process to boost their ego like we read, they going to do it. Once they destroy everything, they going to get out the jam. Get some little money out you. God forbid you get one of them pregnant. It's a wrap. Warning, this is a warning, and this is what's outside, brothers. Moving along, let's get video five. Video five, real short. Now watch this. This is a real thing, brothers, I'm trying to tell y'all. This is warning. This is a real thing out here. Why you think all these songs talk about this, all these music and movies? Because this real. It's a group of women. This is how they get down. Play. The hooked and booked man is like a forbidden temptation. That's what makes him irresistibly attractive to a woman. He stirs a challenge in her. She feels a sense of power in attracting a man who is already taken. Stop. What? For her ego. That's what we just read in the articles. This is what, if you read them tips with the woman, it's, it's all in there. This is what we just read. To boost their ego. Some of them is evil and vindictive. They want to be able to say they took you from your family. That's what they want to be able to say. That's a, that's a badge. That's a stamp they could put on their chest and, and walk off. Play. What makes him the catch for her is his confidence, experience, and authority. The excitement stems from the fact that he's already taken. That's the excitement. The golden rule here is, you want what you can't have. Soon, this man becomes an overwhelming obsession for a woman. I call it the forbidden fruit obsession. Pause. A the forbidden fruit obsession. Because she not even supposed to be talking to the man. She not even supposed to be talking to you. But that demon in her can't stop, don't want to stop, wants to talk to you. Want to see if she could get you to fold. Play. According to me, there are two reasons for women falling for married men. Firstly, wild attraction. And secondly, vulnerability. For a woman, a married man represents a certain security she craves. A woman feels that a married man, compared to a bachelor, can meet her emotional and material needs in a better manner. Stop. Getting Why you can't get that from somebody who available? All them things that the qualities he got, that's for his wife. But you want him to treat you like that. This is the mindset of the adulterous whores. Play. A married man signifies a triumph of one woman over another woman. Pause it. 
It said, the woman taking the married man from the married woman is a triumph of a woman over another woman. Evil. Evil. They're evil in the mind. Play. Trophy catch. To have him is about making the impossible. If a woman wanted a fling, she could have had it with anybody. But a married man at her beck and call makes her value herself more that he's willing to throw it all over for her. It increases her self-esteem. Mind you, she's enjoying this fantasy as much as his wooing, his experience and the way he makes her feel extra special. Oh. Sometimes she likes... And then you see it go into if that man then gave in and he entertained her. But you see her reasoning. You see these women's reasoning. It's about they self. They feel good knowing that they did that damage to a household. They don't care that they could possibly cause a divorce. They could possibly cause a single parent household. They could possibly cause a once single family unit to not a co-parenting because of her ass. They don't care. That's what we showing you today. Moving along. Let's get video six. Say it on the mic, officer. Yeah, that's how you get off. You know, you know, you commit adultery with a, with a woman, the man's getting that orgasm, but that's how she get off. That's her orgasm. She caused havoc. She's happy about that. She's thrilled about what she has done. Let's play this. Hi, this is Tina with loveandrelieving.com, and today's advice panel topic is, why do women go after married men? Well, I'm talking about women who know that the man is married or otherwise. Stop, serious. stop. She says she's talking about women that know the man married. They know. This ain't no, oh, okay, I didn't know. He ain't say all of that. We talking about the ones that know. Like the woman we showed, both of the women in the damn videos we showed. The ones that know. Play. ...involved in a relationship. And I know there's lots of reasons that people cite more um, psychological reasons why women do this. Um, some women think that um, women who do this want to sabotage their lives or are afraid to be in a committed relationship. So they deliberately go after one that won't become a committed relationship. Um, and I'm sure that there are a lot of reasons, but in general, the most common that I've seen from women that I know and from uh, women that post love dilemmas on Love and Relieve Them, it seems like there's a lot of women that just find a lot of value in a man that somebody else wants. Stop. Um, you see this all Do you see the mindset? You can find your own potential husband, but you find a value in somebody that belong to somebody. You sick. You got the devil on you, period. You have a demon on you. You can find you somebody, but you want to come over here, tempt this man, get all in this man's face, put all them wicked thoughts in this man's head, and he got a whole family at home. You're a destroyer. That's what you are. Brothers, Terminator, let that song play in your damn head. I'm going hunting. She going hunting for you. So you got to be aware when you out here, the days are evil. Remember what the scripture said. So from there, let's show some judgment. Give me Exodus, not matter of fact, Leviticus 20 and verse 10. Brothers, you commit adultery, that is a sin. Worthy of death. You just gonna say something? Yeah, I was gonna say, hey, you going into the judgments, but these judgments is what the medicine is for you to meditate on, so you can be like, oh man, I don't want this to be me. One hundred percent. And we gonna get some real life visuals. Mm. The and book of Go ahead. The book of Leviticus, chapter twenty and verse ten. And the man that committeth adultery with another man's wife, even he that committeth adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. That's the judgment. 
Now, you may be saying, well, well can't I repent? Brother, you don't know if you're going to die in the midst of you doing that. We are not King David. We don't know how long our mercy is or how short it is. You go out there and do that, you could die right there in the midst of that adultery with that woman. And we're going to show you that on the video. It's a video we're going to go to. We're going to go to two videos. You was finna say something? Thought you was finna say something. Go to that second video. Video shows suspects in man's robbery, murder, and Lauder Hill. Because remember what it said, the adulterer and adulterer is video eight. Video eight. The Bible just said death is one of the punishments for it. Video eight uh, says video shows suspect in man's robbery, murder in Launder Hill. Launder Hill. Hey, hey, also, why they getting that video? Come bring up to it. Go ahead. Hey, give me, uh, let's go back to Proverbs. Give me Proverbs chapter 7. Uh, read verse 26. Because we just read the judgment in Leviticus. Leviticus 20 and 10. Uh, so let's read about this spirit that's on the weaker vessel that is hunting the precious life. Read. This is the book of Proverbs chapter 7 and verse 26. Mm -hmm. For she have cast down many wounded. She has what? Cast down many wounded. So a lot of times when brothers get caught up in the adultery, that wounded is going into you being stressed, depressed, you beat down your job, you're going through a lot. So she's what? Read it again. For she have cast down many wounded. And done what? Yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Because of that law. That law in Leviticus 20. So you've been slain by her. Read on. Verse 27. Her house is the way to hell. Her house is what? The way to hell. And going what? Going down to the chambers of death. Because what we read earlier in Genesis 39 and verse 9, it says you sin against God when you commit this act. Go to the next chapter, read verse, chapter 8, verse 36. The book of Proverbs, chapter 8 and verse 36. Uh -huh. But he that sinneth against me, wrong of his own soul. So this is the most high saying it. This is what the Most High is saying. Read it again. He that sinneth against me, wrong of his own soul. And read. All they that hate me love death. Death. And that's what we just read. So when you sin against the Most High by committing adultery, you are going down to the chambers of death, the way of hell. All right, that's all. And it's uh, heavy that you uh, mentioned this uh, Proverbs 8 and 27. It says, many strong men have been wounded by her. So you think you strong, you think you proud, you got that proud on y'all, it can't never happen to me. Don't ever say that. It only can happen, it can't never happen to you if you're applying the scriptures. If you meditate like Officer Asa said, that's the only way. It can a uh, possibility it can't happen. If you meditate, you, you got this armor right here, you're girding up your mind day in and day out. But when you proud, nonetheless, many mighty men have been taken by this woman right here. King David was a very strong, mighty man, but he got took out. He got caught up in the situation. So you ain't no better than David. So don't think you invincible, brothers. Here's an example of judgment. Let's play that. Save it. Let it scare you. Play. Face down next to his bed, dead from a bullet to the back. They took something great from me, from my family. With no arrest, Emerald's wife joined police to make a plea to find her husband's killers. They took a, an opportunity to um, to try to, I guess, stop. Pause it. She's at a press conference about her husband being murdered, and got to watch the video of him walking with three holes. Play. Without having to work for it. I'm pretty sure that they will, will do it again. At this point, we believe that it was a robbery gone bad. I don't believe that they imagined it to go bad, a struggle, and then it ended up in the death of the victim. Police say three of the suspects have ties to Miami. Alejandra Porras, Laura Perez Lozano, and Christian Quinones. They do not have a name attached to the woman in red, the woman seen letting the two men into the building. And the fifth suspect, Juan Carvajal, a.k.a. Jurabel, is a reggaeton singer. 
with a big footprint on YouTube. The suspects are purposely evading uh, capture by altering their appearances and using false identities. All the suspects are of Colombian descent. In the past few months, the suspects were spotted in Texas and California, but remain on the run. We have any peace until these individuals are actually brought to justice. You could cut it. You could cut it. So, brothers, you go out there and play. Some of these women get down like that. They didn't stop setting brothers up. That brother was married, had a whole wife and kids. Gone. Why? Gave in to that demon. He thought he was finna get it on. Three sisters, he think he finna take them three sisters up to the bedroom and get it on. No. They were setting him up for a robbery and killed him. Had some men waiting on him. That can happen to you. So play games with this Bible if you want to. Next clip. Let this scare you. This was waiting on you. Pause it real quick. Let me explain to y'all what's going on. This woman found out she's HIV positive. Well, she probably been new. But what she doing, she going on Facebook Live, and she's listing everybody that she has sex with and letting them know, you HIV positive. You slept with me, you HIV positive. She even mentions a married man she slept with. This is what's waiting outside for the married man if you want to play with that demon. Because you don't know who got what. This, you can't look at people and tell what STD they got. Play. Person, you HIV positive. Demonte, Bala, bitch. You HIV positive. Bitch, the little bitch you fucking. Bitch, she gonna be HIV positive. You fucking the bitch wrong. Goddamn, baby daddy, Tony Wood. Bitch, you HIV positive. Bitch, all y'all niggas down the floor. Faller, faller, baller, Dorsey. Why you doing all that shit? And I'm fucking your nigga, your husband wrong. Hmm, you HIV positive. Hmm. Yeah, that motherfucking poet. Now, hey y'all. Yeah, it's time for the real to know now. What, what y'all gotta say now, huh? Hmm. I always get laid, laid, bitch. <laughs> now, y'all sick as fuck. <laughs> Ray long with me. Now, I'm watching y'all motherfuckers die. <laughs> there ain't no time I don't know. Yeah. Motherfuckers play with me. I told you, I'm an evil motherfucker. I'm evil in here. Cut it. <laughs> she said she an evil mf -er. You was gonna say something? Hey, awesome. <laughs> hey, man, let me get another scripture, please. <laughs> Go ahead. Hey, hey, get uh Sirach 39. Sirach 39, 28. Because this is this is the uh this is the spirit that the most high created for yep. to bring forth that judgment that we read in uh Leviticus chapter 20. Read that book. It's the book of Ecclesiasticus, Sirach chapter 39 and verse 28. Uh -huh. There be spirits that are created for vengeance, Read. which in their fury lay on soul strokes. Lay on what? On sore strokes. So that sore strokes could be HIV. It could be herpes. It could be chlamydia. It could be any of those clappers that, that continuously bring on a sore stroke. Read it from the top. There be spirits that are created for vengeance, uh -huh. which in their fury lay on sore strokes. Read. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force. And that's what you've seen in this video with this sister. She says she's an evil mf -er. Man, that's a wicked spirit that the Most High God created just for a brother that want to step outside and sin against his wife and sin against the Most High ultimately. Read on. And appease of the wrath of him that made them. Oh, that's all. Hey, take heed. That's a spirit created for vengeance, the Lord's vengeance. You want to break the law of marriage? That's a punishment. You can literally die. These women can set you up, get you killed, give you an STD. You can end up having a baby by one of them, and you stuck with them for the rest of your life. Remember, the horse said, when you get into that situation, have an end game. Get something out of it. They plan might be to have a baby with your simple behind. Now you stuck with her forever. You stuck with a Glorilla. Evan, however the song go, you stuck with one of them 
forever. Or you play games and it be a transformer. It's bad out here, brothers, and you can't play. Give me Sirach. Last scripture. Give me Sirach chapter 25 and 26. This is the book of Ecclesiasticus. Sirach chapter 25 and verse 26. If she go not as thou would. 25 wouldst, and 25. I'm sorry. 25 and verse 25. Give the water no passage. Uh -huh. Neither a wicked woman liberty to gather abroad. So why we go there? Read that again. Give the water no passage. Merry men, don't get a water no passage. That's why we went there. We know this talking about giving a wicked woman liberty to do what she want to do. But we going here for the top part of this precept. When you ain't giving the water no passage, you not letting none slide. So if you at work, you out and about. Any little advances, maybe might come in the school. Might come up in the school, in the congregation. Read it again. Give the water no passage. What it say? Give the water no passage. Get a water no passage. You ain't getting no entry. Don't let them think they got a chance. Don't let them think y'all got something going on. Any type of little advances, flirtatious, uh, little baits, might get thrown out there. You shut that down. No, they ain't going on over here. No, I'm straight. I'm taking care of it. Bye, beat it. Why? Because that's the judgment waiting on you. So I pray that these brief things touched on, they sink in, we meditate on, we apply them. I pray everybody was edified from that. These are things that's waiting on the married man. And we must be girded up, brothers. We must be spiritually prepared. Because that demon takes people out. We don't want to get taken out. We got to meditate on the scriptures. With that, we say shalom. Most high Christ bless. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Oh!